G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.net video. I know it's been a while, but we're going to get back into it this time around with the date data type. And I'm going to talk about him, how you use him, all the different things that you can do and why he is so much better than just using plain numbers or even a string for that matter. So let's, for instance, start off by creating ourselves a date variable. We'll dim him, we'll call him date one as a date. So join in and let's get into the date fun. All right, first of all, how would you actually store a date? Well, it's pretty simple. Let's go for a static literal date. So let's go date one equals, and you just do it like a string in quotes. You go 10th, 2nd, 2015, which is today's date. And let's write them to the screen. I'm just using a console program because I'm nice and boring. Date one, and we'll do a read line to keep it on the screen. There is my date, 10th the 2nd, 2015, and 12 midnight is just the default time. So now you can see that date data types don't only just hold dates, but they hold times as well. Let me quickly take this off and show you the default date and time. So you can see it's the 1st of January 01, and it's 12 at midnight. Okay, so that's where the dates start. They can't go any lower than that, as you can probably imagine. If you need to go lower than that, you're probably using the wrong data type, all right? Or you probably really need to rethink what you're programming. So look, not only can they store dates, they can store times as well. So we can change the date or we can change the time, just like so. Or you can actually change both at the same time, just like so. And because it loves strings, basically, you're putting a string inside of a date, that means that you can actually use read line as well. So if I just comment that bit out, if I just use a read line, I can let the user type in whatever date that they want. So first of the first, 1865, because I'm just that old, at 14 minutes and 35 seconds p.m. So you can be really specific and you can sort of see how it changes my date a slight bit. So you can see that it's actually storing pieces of the information. It's actually storing the day, the month, the year, hour, minute, millisecond, and the time separately. It's not actually just storing my string and then repeating it. It's actually breaking it up into pieces. So that's really, really handy because it means that we can actually do a little bit of maths based on the date that we have. All right, so that's the quick introduction to a date. Now there's heaps of things that you can do. So we're gonna talk about a few of those things now. We're gonna talk about what's called the now property. We're gonna talk about uh, additions with dates, so adding things on. We're also gonna be talking about the ways that you can format your dates. And then finally, a little bit of date mathematics, okay? And that sounds really weird. That sounds like a really, sounds like a scientist going on a date, but anyway. So what I can do, what I've just done there, and I've done that without even saying it, and it's quick and easy. If I go a date equals now, it's going to grab, as soon as I press play, it'll grab the time and the date that my system is saying it is, jam it inside my variable, and then I can print it out. So bam, you can see it is the 10th of November, or February, I was about to say November, 10th of February, 2015, at 3.26 in the afternoon. All right, so, that is there. Another reason that's really good to use dates is you can probably tell I'm Australian. I do the day, then the month, then the year, because that's just the way you should do it. Some other cultures obviously do it a different way. Date variables will do that automatically for you. You can actually just start using it as an American style date, and it will just treat it. It will know that the system is set up for American dates. So it's actually based on the system and not where you are in the world. Okay, and that's why the dates are so frigging handy, because they'll just work on any system. So, what can we do with this bad boy? So basically, let's say I've got now, I've got the system's current time. Why would you want this current time? Well, let's say you want to log every action the user takes in your program. Well then, let's say the user saves some data, and you want to save that to the log. So what you do is you just grab the now property, and jam that on the dates and time of your log. And that will give you the exact time and the exact date in which it happens. A great example of that might be a point of sale system. A customer makes a purchase. You're obviously going to want to remember the exact date and time that they purchased that. So you just save the now property and that's going to do it for you. Okay. Now let's say, for instance, you're a library loaning system. Okay. 
kid comes in, loans a book, they've got two weeks in which to hand it back to you. So 14 days, exactly. Well, you could easily do that. Using the now variable, you can just go, the date equals now, and down here in the right line, I'm just I'm going to go date one dot add days, and I'm going to type in 14 in the brackets, and that's literally going to add 14 days to today's date. Now the great thing about using add days instead of just adding on to the actual date value is that it's actually if it rolls over to the next month, it's automatically going to calculate that for me. So let's hit play, and you can see it's added 14 days. 10 plus 14 is 24. And just to demonstrate what I'm talking about, let's add uh, 60 days. And you can see it's already rolled over to April there, the 11th of April, 2015. So that's really handy. I'd suggest you try out some of the different ones. There's heaps of ads, as you can see. And that's pretty much it, I suppose. The adding is just really, really straightforward. And it's handy. I've used it so many times in my programs. Now, the next thing is I want to just quickly explain to you the different components of a date. You can see that the dates are made up of days and months and years and hours and minutes and milliseconds, but they're also made up of what you call ticks. Okay, really, really handy. Before I talk about that, let's have a quick look. You can actually see there is a day property. There's even a date property, but let's have a look at the day property. It literally just gives us the value of the day. And again, there's this one for the month, which is two, because it's February. And there's one for the year and there's one for the hour. And I could keep on going, but you get the point at this one. You can actually break up the date into its different parts. The great thing about this, you can actually get more than that. So day of the week, okay, that will actually tell me the position that my day currently is in the week. So the day starts on Sunday, which is a zero. Monday is a one. And it's Tuesday today, so it says two. All the way up to Saturday, which is a six. Okay, and then it restarts at zero on a Sunday. So that'd be really handy if you're doing like a scheduling application and you had to do something every Wednesday. So you could check the day of the week. If it's number three, that would be a Wednesday. So your program would act upon it straight away. So that's really, really handy there. But one thing I want to talk about and I want to make sure I get right is ticks. Ticks are incredibly important. And to be completely honest, the only thing that dates remember are the ticks. All right, ticks are how many, I think it's microseconds, have occurred since the default date. So I showed you the default date before, it was the 1st of January 01, 12 at midnight. So what happens is ticks tells us how many nano or microseconds have occurred since then. So look how big that number is. So today's date is that many ticks from the default date. All right. Another example, let's quickly set this back to the default date. So this is going to be now 1st of the 1st, 01, 12 midnight. You can see it says zero milliseconds. All right. Now let's try and do this a little bit. Let's go date one equals 9 a.m. All right. So how many spaces is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 324 billion ticks. That's all it took to get to 9 a.m. from the default date. Anyway, that's just something I quickly wanted to talk about because ticks are going to come in handy in the future if you want to calculate really specific things. It's really good for measuring performance. Okay, and we'll, I'll actually show you a little bit of that in the end when we do some of the maths. But what's really important right now is making this look good or however you want it to look. By default, you're always going to get your systems date format and then the time and the hour signature at the end the 24 hour symbol at the end now you can actually control this a lot the easiest way to control it the quickest way to control it is to use some of these two functions so you can go to two long date strings let's try that monday the first of january 01 mm. i'm going to put this back to now because it'll be more interesting and you can try different ones there's probably this one is going to be pretty handy if you're doing times obviously and then there's short dates again pretty darn handy and long time what's that look like that's yeah, just long time that's pretty interesting anyway those are what you call quick formats okay it just spits out in the specific way that it talked about and there's heaps of them and I suggest you have a quick look at them 
And it's really important that you try and learn some of these different ones that you can use. You never know when you might need them all. The last thing I'm gonna show you is the way you can customize your date formats. And for that, you use the two string function. In brackets, in quotes. So, right now you can see I'm using to string, it's got brackets, and in the quotes, it says format. It wants to format as a string. And what we can actually do is actually change the way the date is represented. Let's say we want to put the day in a different spot, or maybe we want the day and the month, but not the year. We can do all those things by using different formatting characters. What are those formatting characters? Well, they're right here on Microsoft's website. I'll put a link down in the YouTube description so you don't have to try and copy it down. Suggest if you're gonna use dates though, that you try to bookmark this page because even I can't remember most of these off by heart. Some are really easy. Some are not so easy. But anyway, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see these format specifiers, okay? Heaps and heaps of different ones. They go on for a little bit. So what I suggest you do is have a quick look at them and when you need to format a date in a specific way, you go and have a look at these and you pick and choose the ones that you need to use. So you can see that if I put a little d, it's going to give me the day of the month from 1 to 31 and then you got a double d1 which says the day of the month from 0 1 to 31 so the difference is the double d1 is going to give you a two digit day all the time and that's the same for let's say the month and the hours and things like that so you get a 12 hour clock with single digit double h will give you a two digit hour and so forth okay so if i wanted to do something a little bit different i could do a double digit day so let's go dd space and let's say I want the month as something a little bit different. If I do four M's, it's going to give me the full name of the month. So let's go one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, what else can I do? Something slightly interesting. Um, ah, let's just try that. Press play. 10th, 10 February. Now there's no built-in function to be able to do a TH or an ND or an RD. You have to do them yourself, unfortunately. That'd be a quick if statement, but unfortunately that doesn't exist in VB at the moment. So the two string is really handy and I suggest you have a look at some of these different format specifiers, okay? Have a look at the description down the video. To cap off this video, let's have a look at a little bit of date mathematics, okay? Let's say I wanna calculate the performance of my program, all right? I wanna figure out how long it took for my program to open up and shut down. So what I'm going to do now is I've got one date already set to now. So set the starting time. And I'm going to rename it to start. All right, I hope I'm not going too quick for you people. But basically what I'm doing is I'm going to register the start time. And I'm going to quickly do something. Let's say there's a console read line there. Whoa, what am I doing? Right line, press enter. And then there's a read line and I'm going to dim a variable called end which equals now also set the ending time you don't like end do you? ending that shut you up and what I can do now is I can actually calculate how long it took to get from this point down to this point and then print it to the screen and we'll do that really quickly let's do a console.write line and we'll just do ending minus start and that's it so however long it took to get to the end minus where we started it looks like it took me 1.23 seconds now the one thing I quickly want to note to you is that doing a little bit of maths in um, yeah I just showed you but yeah doing a bit of maths with the date variables doesn't give you a date when you do it. So let's say the ending minus the start won't give me a date. It gives what you call a time span, which is slightly different. Okay. It tells you how much difference between days and times there are. Okay. So let's just quickly do that again. Let's do, do, do. It took, and we'll just do that. And I'll put brackets around him because he's whinging. Oh, come on. Two string then. Little whinge guts, press enter, bam! It took 1.8 seconds. 
All right, so what if we want it to be a little bit more specific than that? Because it's coming up with lots of stuff. It's coming up with the hours, minutes, seconds, and everything else. So what you can actually use is there's total properties down here. You've got days, hours, milliseconds, minutes, and seconds. So let's say I wanted to measure everything in seconds. It's actually going to give me the fractional parts as well. So I can say it took something seconds just on the end there. Hit play. Bam. It took 1.5 seconds. How easy is that? That literally, and that would apply to if I wanted to add dates, divide, times, things like that. And I don't know when you would have divide or times dates, but minus and plus, really straightforward, very, very helpful. That pretty much brings this to a close for this tutorial. I hope you actually learned something, everybody. If you've got any suggestions, comments, anything, put them down the bottom, please. Like, subscribe, comment. I'd love to hear from you. But for the moment, this is Nick Dingle signing out, and I'll catch you in the next VB video, hopefully. See you then.